Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I am Dana Goodwill. Over there is the graphic Don himself, <laughs> John Lewandowski. How you doing there, buddy? Good. Tired. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. It's, what, 1040? I got to be up early, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I had an announcement to... Oh, yeah. Um, before we get into our show today, to, this is our last show for this week. Um, tomorrow we will not be doing a show as me and John will be, um, busy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, we're taking it as a team building day. You will see us tomorrow, but it will not be for a game recap. Um, me and John have been working very hard, well, mostly... John's working hard on graphics. I'm working hard on the draft stuff. That's a pain in the ass. Yeah. And and I know I'm not supposed to swear, but literally scouting the draft is a pain in the butt. When you don't have direct contact with it. Right. So I have to go off of video footage. I have to go off of what the scouting reports are. I have to go off of all these things. So just so you're aware... The reason that there is no show tomorrow is because on Monday we're dropping three two shows for you guys. So thank you. Also, please go over to our YouTube page and click that subscribe button, hit like on some of our videos if you like our content. All righty, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit them at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. John, stop yawning. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's contagious. Eventually, I'll start. All right. All righty, this is where I turn it over to John, and John's reluctantly doing this. <laughs> All, All right. right, so today the Nashville Predators took on the Seattle Kraken. John, it's the Nashwaukee Predmerals. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Shots on goal in the first period. Seattle outshot Nashville 13 to 1. In the second period, Seattle outshot Nashville 16 to 10. In the third period, Seattle outshot Nashville 10 to 5. And in total, Seattle outshot Nashville 39 to 16. <clears throat> In the face-off circle, the Predators were better at 54% to 46%. The Kraken on the power play went 1 for 4, the Predators 0 for 3. Kraken had 8 penalty minutes, the Predators 10 penalty minutes. Hits, the Predators had 31, the Kraken 22. Blocks, the Kraken had 12, the Predators had 10. Giveaways, the Predators had 9, the Kraken had 7. All righty. Um, scoring in the first was Daniel Sprong with his 19th with an assist from Donato, his 11th, and 10 of his 18th. This is going to hurt. Scoring on the power play at the 1737 mark is Illy Tolvanen for his 16th of the season. With his time with Nashville, I think he only had like four goals. Yeah. In his time with Nashville, in 13 games, he had four points. In his time in Seattle, he has 15 goals, 10 assists, 25 points. As much as it pains me to say this, uh, the assistant from McCann and Bjorkstrand, both of their 23rd, but... Nashville, I'm I'm a huge fan. I, I will always love my team, but on this one, in the words of Ren and Stimpy, you idiot. Hmm. Because this is the one that's gonna come back to bite you. No matter how you look at it, this one bit you in the butt firsthand. Already. It's the first period, I already bit you in the in the butt. First game back in Nashville shows them what he's what they lost for nothing. With all the trades, you could have traded him. Could have got something. An unsigned prospect would have been better than nothing. A guy they gave up on would have been better than nothing. 
don't let me refer revert back to that theory. But then in the second period, Tyson Berry scores his 12th with an assist from Tomasino, his 10th, and Duchesne, his 34th. That puts the game at 2-1. to one. Man, Ailey Tolman and sticks to dagger uh, in, with his 17th unassisted. John, you want to take the third? <laughs> sure. Then in the third period at the 53-second mark, Matt Duchesne scores his 22nd of the year. With assists from Barry, his 38th, and Tomasino, his 11th, making it 3-2. to two. <clears throat> Then at the 337 mark, Adam Larson scores his 7th of the year. This is by McCann, his 24th, and Dunn, his 46th, making it 4-2. to two. Then Matty Beneers scores his 20th of the year, assisted by Dunn, his 47th, and Everly, his 39th, making it 5-2. Uh, at the 1047 mark, Jared McCann scores his 35th unassisted, making it 6 to 2. And Oliver Jorkstrand scores his 17th with an assist from Gord, his 33rd, making it 7 to 2. Also, in this game, <clears throat> Cody Glass got hurt. Just to add on to the list of injuries. Yeah. Sorrow stopped 32 of 39 with a 0.821 save percentage. I'm not even going to get into it. This was bad. Yeah. The only guy who, okay, the only guy who was a plus, the only guys that were pluses were Glass, Tomasino, and Duchesne. That's it. That is it. That is literally it. Everybody else is a minus or a zero. Two different. Two sets of defensemen are minus minus two. Two forwards are minus four. Sissons is a minus three. Novak was a minus two. You can't even be mad when you get dismantled like this. This just shows that we're not a playoff team. Yeah. This is a playoff team. And and, and and here's the thing. I'm not going to take anything away from Manny Berniers. Manny Berniers is having a great rookie year. After making the transition from college, he has 50 points in 70 games. A rookie. But here you go. This is the problem. Nashville, whenever they get a high number pick, it's always a defenseman. Always. They have not drafted a forward in the top five since. Here's where you're going to laugh. David Leguan, their first pick. That is horrible. It's great for us because it just shows that we're able to take raw talent and turn it into NHL talent. Right. It's great for the Admirals. <clears throat> Bad for the Preds long term. Now, let me just say this. Am I disappointed in what happened with the Preds tonight? Or this afternoon? Yeah, I fell asleep in the third because it was horrid. I literally took a nap. Well, I started watching the truck race and fell asleep. That's literally how it went. I turned it off and started watching the truck race because it went and got out of hand. And I wasn't going to sit there for another 10 minutes and watch them potentially get blown out by, you know, by get tangles. Preds fans, I understand why a lot of you left. It was hard to watch. The three stars of the game. Third star of the game was Oliver Bjorkstrand. Second star of the day. Second star of the game is Jared McCann. First star of the game is Illy Tolman. And 
And that was Philip Grubauer stopping 14 of 16 with a 0.875 save percentage. On to the next portion of our show, which is the Admirals. I think they're in that uh, survival of the fittest mode, but we got one more game on this road trip. It's not till Friday, so they're coming home, but uh, What's your what's you what you uh let's just get into it so we can get our starts. All right. So the Admirals took on the Belleville Senators today. Shots on goal in the first period. Milwaukee outshot Belleville 13 to 6. In the second period, Belleville outshot Milwaukee 9 to 6. In the third period, Milwaukee outshot Belleville. 14 to 10, and in overtime, Milwaukee outshot Belleville. Four to three in total, Milwaukee outshoots Belleville 38 to 28. Milwaukee on the power play went one for three with 10 minutes, five infractions, and Belleville went one for five with six minutes, three infractions. I got the scoring. Okay. Scoring in the first. Nothing. Scoring in the second is August Crookshanks with his 24th with an assist from Ma uh, Nancy Gunet and Igor Sokolov. Uh, Gunet's 30th and Sokolov's 34th. That was on the power play. That was the only goal in the second. In the third at the 832 mark, Jonathan Asprop scores his fifth with an assist from Igor Sokolov, his 35th, and Jake Luchin, his 32nd. Somebody just signed this man to a next year contract already, but Ty Fellheimer scores his fourth with an assist from the captain, Cole Schneider, his 20th, and Anthony Angelo, his eighth. Then at the 1828 mark, the Admirals tie it from the captain there to bang home a rebound. With his 22nd, with an assist from Angelo, his ninth, and San his 13th. That was scored on the power play. No scoring on overtime. In the shootout, shooting first was John Leonard. He goes and gets the point, which means goal. Then shooting was Jake Luchin. He missed the net. Uh, then Zach Sanford, no goal. Uh, he he that was stopped. Uh, then uh, Igor Sokolov uh, stopped by uh, Cooley, who was in net. Um, uh, Yoko Kavell stopped. Um, and Rourke Chardier, no goal. Admirals escape with a two one win or a three to two win in a shootout. Three stars of the game, third star of the game was Anthony Bebo with 35 saves on 37 shots. Second star of the game was Igor Sokolov with two assists. First star of the game, Devin Cooley, 28 saves, 26 shot or 26 saves on 28 shots. Sorry, had it backwards. Um, And the win. Thoughts. It was a good game. They this, battled hard to come back. This team, as as me and you've been saying for about the last month or so, since the trade deadline, pretty much. Yeah. Has found ways to win. Yeah. Lost some they shouldn't have, but found ways to win in the ones they need to. Right. And it has now gone on a five. Game win streak, and I know all streaks come to an end, right? At some point, we're hoping not. There's a little wood table it sits on, so here you go, knock on wood there for a little bit. But uh, you know, I'm 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 saying this from a perspective of we got Grand Rapids next, and then we have the eternal week of hell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Me and John have been looking at this week all season going, this is going to be the biggest week of the season. 
because for the last month now, we've been sitting five games back or five five points back from Winnipeg who can't seem to win a game. And every time they do win a game, the Preds win a game. Right. Just stay right with them. Every time the Preds lose, they lose. Odd part is, is we have three games in hand, which is six points. We're only five back. Yeah. Let's go on the tear. It's, it, 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 they could make it. Likelihood. Toronto, Boston, Pittsburgh, all on the docket within the next week. I don't like them chances. No. And then after that, it's all division opponents. Right. It, 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 I don't like the Preds' chances. The Admiral's magic number? One, one point. Wolves go to OT and lose tomorrow. We're in. That simple. Texas takes that game to OT, we're in. It's just that simple. Now, the reason our show is late is because I sat there and dissected the Texas game. Because, obviously, it is a key vital importance of us to make the playoffs at the current moment. Now, would I be upset if Chicago won tomorrow? Nope. Then all we got to do is go to Grand Rapids and get one point. And not only in that one point will we clinch a playoff spot, but we take the lead in the division again. All what it's coming down to, we're coming down to the wire here. We've got eight games left. Yeah. From the looks of it. Let's take a look here. The Admirals have nine games left. I stand corrected. Nine. And they are tied at 81 apiece with no games to add. And the only team in our divisions, in our division, there's only two teams with games to add. The Wolves and Manitoba. And Manitoba only has one, and they're four points back. So I think we're a little safe there. We got to keep winning. We got to keep getting points. Don't lose in regulation. Yeah. Biggest part there is out of the teams in the playoffs, we have the most regulation losses. We also have the most regulation wins. Texas won't lose in regulation. And that's what helps them. At the current moment. They also hold the tiebreaker between us. To my recollection. But. You know. I, could, I would really love to do it. In Grand Rapids. But I'd love to do it more. On the first. At home. You know. Mm -hmm. But let's get the monkey off our back and celebrate the boys coming home on, on, on the first. How about that one? So oh, what what's your thoughts there, John? Do you what what do you think? Do you, would you like it just to be over and Texas to pull a dub tomorrow and us have to go win in Grand Rapids to keep pace? Or let them let Chicago try and beat them? Not that I'm saying that I, you know, Chicago, that Texas is going to let Chicago beat them. That's not, that's not going to happen, but you right. get where you're going. You know, do, what would you say? Would you, like, I know we've talked about it a little bit, but the master of our own destiny versus, I mean, at the end of the day, we have to look at it that way. We are the master right. of our own destiny. But it would be a little help, like, nice to get a little help from the outside. If you guys could beat them in, you know, if, if, even if you beat them in, because it's complicated. I think it is. It's going to be OT win because I think it, it's just a point. All right. 
So I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. But even with that, with a loss, would bump them out of out of first place because their percentage would be lower. Right. That gives us that. So to, basically, no matter what, tomorrow we're going to have a game in hand against Texas. As of tomorrow, we have a game in hand against Texas. What happens in that game does reflect on what happens with us, but we can't look at that game as it's the, oh, we could get in off this game. No, we need to look at that game and go, if they lose, good. If they win, good. There is no lose for us in this. All right. They beat Chicago in regulation and get two points. Cool. Then we got to go beat Grand Rapids and get two points. Right. If Chicago wins and we beat Grand Rapids, we take first place and we make the playoffs anyway. So either way, the game in Grand Rapids should be more important and more circled on, on my, it's more on my calendar than tomorrow's Wolves in Texas game. Right. Now, if you think for five seconds I'm not going to be paying attention to that, you are sadly mistaken. Me and John are both going to have all eyes on that game, as well as the Preds game. Because if the Preds drop back-to-back -back again, you know, I heard the fire poil chant in the crowd. The fans are utterly frustrated and, dis and disgusted. This is not how you play hockey at home. You have more opposing fans in your building than you do your own. That's a moment where you take your ownership and you look at it and you go, uh-oh. Because that means either one of three things happened. Your team is garbage. Your fans don't feel included. Or they feel like you forgot about them. I'll take the latter two. The back two. I don't think this team's garbage. It's young, talented, going to be exciting in the future. We're in a retool right now. That's all we're doing. It's not like we're trying to miss the playoffs. We're just retooling. Tyson Berry for Ekholm was literally a, 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 a even swap in that own in its own trade. The value for each player is the same. To get Schaefer and a first? Not to mention what we got for Tanner Janot. All right. <clears throat> and Gramlin. You know, I, I mean, the way I look at it is, yes, me and John are going to be very busy in the draft. <laughs> mm -hmm. At least the first day and the, well, the first well, both days, but the first day we're going to be very busy. Um, but I, I do think, well, actually, I think we're more busy the second day. I think we have like two seconds, three thirds, two fourths, a fifth, three fifths, actually, a sixth. I should look that up again. I can't remember. My brain no one to work, and we're running low on time. All right. Two firsts, two seconds, three thirds, three fourths, a fifth, a sixth, or two fifths, and, and a sixth. Next year, one first, two, three seconds, a third, two fourths, a fifth, no sixth, and a seventh. The next year, two firsts, a second, a third, fourth, a fifth, and no seventh. Do you think at this point that the Preds gathered enough to complete their re their retool just this uh, this trade deadline? Or do you think they need to do more? I think they have done enough. And and the interesting part about all that is obviously the cap situation. Right. Uh, the cap situation clearly is a problem. The Preds' current protected cap hit is like for this season uh, 75 million. 
but your average cap hit is 67 for next year. Your projected cap hit is 10 million lower than what it was this season. That's not including free agency and open current cap space. Open current cap space, the Preds are at 33 million in the bottom five of the league. So the Preds got more than enough money for cap. Question is, what do you do with it? Do you spread it out? Get some pieces? See what happens? What do you do? Coaching becomes a big question. That's the uh, question mark that all Preds fans have on hand because you know and I know that if Hines is back, you lose the fans. The fans are done with him. They've had it. It shows in your attendance. It shows in the chant tonight. Shows in the chant previous nights. Shows the anger and frustration on social media amongst fans. Now, Hines may be more than a capable coach. Not in this system. But for a veteran team, or maybe a rebuilding team, that just needs to, like, I hate to say it, but suck. You keep that guy around. Um, The other part, if we are going to go full rebuild, Saros has got to go. <laughs> I hate to be mean to you, but Juice, but uh, I don't see us falling out of the top 15, top 16 teams. And I, I see us being a, a window, like a window shopper playoff team kind of over the next couple of years if Sorrow sticks around. Question I have for myself is, is he is a UFA after this year. If you're going to be rebuilding, you might want to move him. You don't want to lose him for nothing. You already did that. We all saw how well that went for us. And before we wrap up our show here, thank you, Pekka, for everything. Here and in Nashville, the memories are forever enshrined in that statue in front of Bridgestone. And I hope to see it soon. Take a picture with it even. There a moment when I watched it, there was a small tear of joy that went down my eye, seeing guys like Kevin Klein and James Neal and, and Mitch Korn and all these other representatives and former players and former people of the, of the Preds organization come and support PAX, being immortalized as one of the franchise key pieces. A guy nobody thought was ever going to do anything. But Nashville did. And Milwaukee put him to work. And we turned him into a star. You're welcome. We've been doing it for years. Thanks for Saros. Your thanks in advance for Yarrow. All our all our effort in Milwaukee. Thank you so much, Nashville. We love you to death because you guys give us the best prospects, even undrafted. Uh, guys like Bouchard have come up big this year for us. He's played where he needs to be. If he needs, if if, if he go, if Taylor goes, you're playing forward tonight. You're a defenseman, but you're playing forward tonight. He will do it, and I can't. Those those kinds of players don't just come, you know, out of nowhere. You know, I I, I really do think that Bouchard's a very talented hockey player. Um, 
So out of all that, do you think we clinch within the next four days? I do think, think we do. Do it handles business tomorrow? Do you think they're a little frustrated blowing that 3-0 lead? Yeah. I mean, because that's what it's going to really come down to is what team shows up for them tomorrow. Right. Obviously, like, we have a day off. We've been... We've played 12 games this month already. Um, by the way, I hope you guys all enjoyed our, um, our spring graphic. And to all of you in Wisconsin, don't worry. The snow will be gone by the end of the week. <laughs> mm. So we'll see you all later. Thank you guys for watching.